Hello, everyone. Um, you probably might have ran into scenarios where, probably just like me, where you write uh, or program applications on and off. And oftentimes you figure out that your local machine is kind of outdated, obsolete, meaning your Visual Studio code is not up to up to date. The packages that you have on your local machine is not up to date. Um, and there are dependency issues on your machine. And uh, each time when you uh, restart your uh, programming journey uh, or developing apps, you have to spend significant amount of time in, in updating these things on your local machine, be it a Mac, be it a Windows, be it a Linux, you still have to go through this process. But I found out a, a very unique way where you don't have to worry about anything on your local machine. You don't have to even worry about the configuration of your machine to develop apps using this uh, service from Google Cloud. It's called Cloud Workstations. And uh, in this video, uh, I'll show you how exactly you can use Cloud Workstations to kickstart your, uh, uh, the application journey process. Uh, in addition to that, if you're working in an organization and if you are an enterprise and if you wanted to onboard uh, new employees or consultants or third-party companies that you work with, Oftentimes, onboarding them into your organization probably take several weeks, uh, if not months, uh, getting them the accesses to the software that they want, the packages to be installed on their machine. These, uh, these processes itself will take a lot of time. Uh, and oftentimes, these vendors and these contractors and consultants are really expensive. So to, to save uh, that amount of time that you spend and the, uh, uh, the, the expense on these, uh, on these resources, it's ideal to cut down that regular legacy way of uh, providing the workstations and leveraging the services like, uh, like Cloud Workstations from Google Cloud. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create Cloud Workstations right from the beginning and how you can use some of these services right up, uh, uh, right out of the bat. So without, without any further ado, let's jump into it. So I am in my Google Cloud uh, project console and uh, I'm going to go into uh, Cloud Workstations. So here I am in Cloud Workstation. And since I've already created some Cloud Workstations, you probably will see an empty screen and asks you to create a new workstation. But when you land into this page, the first thing that you have to do is to create a cluster management, meaning uh, these workstations are basically the, uh, 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 the, uh, the virtual machines on top of a cluster. So the first thing that you need to do is to create a cluster. So I'm gonna go sh show you how to create one. So I selected the create workstation cluster. Uh, you probably have to give a name, location where uh, your workstation should live, uh, the cluster should live, and then go ahead and create. Since I've already created, I have this workstation called cluster Azim WK SKTN, uh, which lives in US East, and uh, it has the network and subnetwork information. So if you are working in an organization where you don't have enough permissions to configure the network and subnetwork sub sub uh, related parameters, please work with network, your networking team to provide this parameter so that you don't have to deal with this in this project. Oftentimes they will provide you a parameter or they will provide you a shared network information which you have to point your cluster to pick up from. So once you create the cluster uh, management, you go to workstation configuration. So in this, uh, since I've already created a workstation configuration, I'm gonna show you how you have to do one. So I selected this, uh, you give the basic information as what your workstation configuration should, should look like, enable, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, enable faster uh, workstation setup. Uh, if you want a lower cost, you can pick the disable, uh, uh, the lower cost option. And um, the quick uh, start pool size basically says you'll have one resource all the time to get started. You can always make it zero, it will go to zero. You can always make it more than one. Uh, feel free to play around with it. Obviously, you can also have different types of uh, uh, workstation configurations. In this case, I'm gonna go with the uh, four CPUs and 16 GB memory and play around with the different uh, configurations that it will provide. So again, it will give you different uh, sections where you can configure the disk type, the basic editor, so on and so forth. Just to, out of curiosity, I'm gonna select this dropdown and see what are all the options I have. So I have basic code OSS, uh, which is basically Visual Studio Code uh, free edition. And you, as you can see, I have IntelliJ, PyCharm, Rider, WebStorm, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm gonna go with the default one. And I am policy, obviously you can give uh, the uh, principles to which uh, you want 
uh, this workstation uh, accessible so you can give the principles here so yeah, here it basically uh, shows the principles but you can keep on adding the principles here so since i've already created a uh, uh, a workstation configuration i'm not going to do anything here so once you create the configuration you go to the workstation go ahead and create uh, a new workstation give it a name and it will basically let you pick the cluster configuration, which we just created in, in, the, in the previous step and go ahead and create it. So now I have uh, the workstation. So it takes probably 15 to 20 minutes to have the configuration cluster and the workstation up and running. And once it's up and running, you will probably see this screen where you have to go ahead and start uh, the workstation. Even this will take probably a few minutes. So uh, what it basically does, as you can see in the previous step, it basically picks up a free version of Visual Studio Code on top of this virtual machine on the cluster. Uh, you will get to access the Visual Studio Code from the browser instead of doing the same thing on your local machine. Um, you, do, you don't have to worry about how powerful your machine is, the RAM, uh, anything about your uh, your uh, your uh, local machine since this is on a project in gcp and the infrastructure is in within the gcp project everything is taken care of by the project and all that you have you have to do is to access it from the browser and and start writing the code it it will be pre configured with all the packages that you want which i'll be showing you right away so as you can see it just um, showed showed me the option to launch so i'm going to go ahead and select the launch button which basically lands me into this uh, uh, UI, which is basically Visual Studio Code. And, um, uh, and you can start creating the folders, write the code, deploy, and uh, do many things, many, many things. So in future videos, I'm gonna show you know, how to write simple application uh, using a workstation, uh, be it Python, be it Node.js, and deploy into Cloud Run and other uh, compute services. So just to go over what exactly the, uh, this IDE has, uh, one cool thing that I wanted to show you is it is actually embedded with Code Assist, meaning you can ask questions once you enable, you can ask questions right here. It will tell you to do, uh, you know, basically gives you the code, uh, gives you the code suggestions, test cases, which I'm going to make another video uh, which uh, ex explaining that. Uh, but just, just so we are in this screen, uh, this IDE workstation is fully configured with all Google Cloud uh, services. As you can see, I have Kubernetes, uh, Cloud Run, API, Secret Management. And in, in, in a previous, uh, in another video, I actually used Cloud Run to deploy applications. So in, uh, I'm going to make another video to explain how simple it is to create a simple web application using Cloud Run, using Cloud Workstation within minutes. So that's about using Cloud Workstation. So if you like this video and if you found this uh, uh, video informative, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to make more and more informative videos so you will all get benefit from. Uh, looking forward to see you in another video. Thank you so much.